All right, everybody, welcome back to Matt Money. Today, we're going to be talking about the four and a half year update for Fundrise. I've been consistently adding to this portfolio about 150 bucks every month. I used to add a little bit more, but that was when I was living abroad. And fortunately, some of my bills were more so paid for. So we're going to talk about the 2021 performance. So it was about 14.7% overall. Some of the projects already actually had a 40% or plus return. So what I'm going to do so obviously we're sharing the screen here for you guys. We're gonna hop into it a little bit. You can see how I've added to it over time. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll also talk a little bit about individual performance as well. So if you guys aren't necessarily familiar with the platform, a little walk through it to see if you guys are interested. Now, if you guys are interested in it and you decide, hey, this is something I might want to do as an alternative to the stock market, I'll have an invite a friend sort of link in the description below. It's not going to give me any money, but it will do is uh, eliminate some of the expense ratios associated with Fundrise. There's a very small bit of obviously them putting all the deals together and stuff of the like. So they do take a little bit of a management fee. I think it's less than one and a half percent or something like that. But make sure to do your own due diligence and let me know what you guys think of the video in the comments section down below. And if this is your second or third time watching a video, and you like it, make sure to hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out, really trying to grow the channel here. So just walking into Fundrise as a whole, uh, you can see that I invested about $1,000 back in the 2017 timeframe. So not very much. Uh, and I kind of just let it sit stagnant and it grew, you know, a 10, 12% over that period of time. And, uh, you know, when I moved to Trinidad, I had a little bit more excess cash. I was like, you know what? I need to start diversifying away from the stock market a little bit. I started adding a little bit more then I got a little bit more aggressive, a couple hundred dollars a month. I think it was like 350 bucks a month uh, for a couple months. And then once I moved back to the States, I kind of pulled back on that again uh, to about 150 bucks a month. But you can see some big spike ups in here. That's the dividends that are kind of coming through every uh, every couple uh, every couple quarter or every couple months here, you get a good dividend. So we'll touch a little bit on that. Um, so hopping over to some of the performance that we had for 2021, and what I'm going to be breaking through and kind of wanting you guys to know is I originally was doing more income focused for Fundrise, but now uh, any money that I'm putting in, I've determined that I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, growth aspect of it to see if I can get a little bit more of uh, growth out of it as well. And I saw how well these were performing and so in terms of the growth side and also I don't necessarily need the income right now. So if necessary, I could always sell out of these sort of portfolios where it's say growth oriented, let's just say 10 years or so, move it back into the income side uh, if I so wanted to do so. Uh, so now that I've obviously have a bigger portfolio, uh, it's a little bit less reliant on income for me these days, you know, making around 20, $25,000 a year in dividend income. I don't necessarily need or fo need to focus on getting more income. To me, it's more about getting myself to the next level, getting to that eight figure mark. Uh, so with that, uh, taking a quick look, you can take a quick look and see all the different types of, say, allocation that they have or strategies that they have. They have fixed income, they have core plus, which is kind of like a balance between income and growth. And then you have the value adds, which I think is going to be more focused towards growth. And you have opportunistic. I uh, have been able to find this opportunistic wedge. But what it is kind of cool is if you click on, say, this growth E-REIT, for example, which performed really well this year. Uh, it's a very small percentage of my portfolio, but in here there's 12 portfolios. Oh, here's an opportunistic one. So let's take a quick look at that. But uh, if you wanted to, you could click on any of these sort of little wedges. Granted, it's only a dollar here, dollar there, but you can view more details. This is apparently an apartment renovation where they're trying to do some restoration, some value adds to it, and eventually say exit the portfolio in, in some time. So they're aiming for anywhere between a 10 to 14% rate of return uh, on their investment. You can see a little bit more about how they got involved. So they probably <clears throat> loaned out 25% of the entirety of the project. It was a $98 million purchase overall. Wells Fargo backed it with 70 million bucks. Uh, we have two people involved in the deal. We have McDowell Properties, Fundrise. You can see that we're the majority of the equity holders here. And I anticipate what, they're, anticipate what they're doing is they got a little bit extra cash uh, with this. So they're trying to make some updates and eventually flip the property in some due time. So you can see something like that in the portfolio. You can do that for every single one um, in your entirety of, um, in the entirety of every single sort of tab that you have. So there's a growth for REIT 2, 
growth REIT one, there's an income fund one, there's an income fund five. Um, and so you could literally go through and just say, hey, you know, what, are the, what is this looking like? Um, so here's an example of an opportunistic one in LA uh, where they bought a commercial renovation property. They put 4 million into it. And they're hoping to flip it for six to 12% uh, in the coming years. So I don't think that this is something that they're gonna try to hold. I think they're literally just trying to buy it, uh, renovate it a little bit and flip it. Uh, so let's go to something where I have a little bit more uh, equity in. So uh, I have a little bit more equity in some of these income rates. So for example here, this is all income focused. So you're looking at 15 different projects. Let's go to the biggest one here in Katy, Texas. It's home construction projects. There's a lot of construction going on west of Houston. Um, hell, I've seen it when I drive by it. Um, so if you look, it's the Beeson Home Construction here in Katy. They basically put $90 million up and said, hey, you know, here's $90 million in a couple months or so. Uh, we want basically uh, to, to get our money back. Uh, it's a construction loan. I mean, that, that's, that's all it really means. And, you know, it might be a couple percent, you know, it might be, you know, a few percent but at the end of the day. It's, it's paying an income and you can kind of see a little bit about, you know, cost of shares, how many shares I have. They generally start off a, something at a, an asset value of about 10. And obviously this is more focused on income. So they're not really concerned about making that grow from 10 to 12 to 13. They're more so concerned about getting these dividends out. So you can see the unpaid dividends I kind of have waiting to kind of come through, uh, which should be getting paid here in the next couple of days. So I'll do an update video on that. But you can also see the total amount of dividends I've received from investing in this particular income e-read over time. Um, so about 150 bucks or so over time and a little bit of appreciation about nine dollars worth of appreciation but you can literally go down and check every single one of them here's one that returned 47 percent very small amount like i said i normally focus on the income you can see 56 percent but in the future i'm gonna wind down a little bit from that but you can see how strong the uh the portfolio was and the growth aspect of things this year um just kind of taking a quick look at it but Here's another thing. Uh, let's just look at some of the core plus. Let's just look at one of these apartments that we have here in Georgetown, Texas, for example, $25 million investment. So what does that get us? Uh, it's basically getting us uh, oh, it's a two-parter. So basically you had um, Fundrise put in for one fund, Fundrise put in for another fund. So uh, that's pretty cool. They own the apartment complex and I anticipate you're going to get a little bit of growth out of it. I mean, obviously you're going to get a little bit of income out of it. So it's going to be complimentary for for both and i think that that's probably why they put it in a, a balanced read you're going to get some income you're going to get some growth uh i anticipate it's because it's in texas they're going to anticipate some growth in that particular part of uh of the area uh kind of going forward um but yeah that's just a little bit of the insights around it um what i'm anticipating is my ten thousand dollar investment here is going to yield me approximately 125 bucks every quarter. Um, and so that's about a four and a half percent yield, um, which is kind of where it's been historically. I've kind of been tracking and kind of looking and trying to match it. There's no way to kind of look and say, hey, your 10,500 bucks is getting a four and a half percent yield. No, the dividends has kind of come in. And if you want to just take a quick look, I'm adding 150 bucks every single month, um, 79 transactions in total. But you can see here in October time frame, I got 106 bucks. And then in um, July, I got 84 bucks. And so since I'm adding a couple hundred bucks every month, um, I anticipate it continues to grow. Uh, 78 bucks here. And from what we saw in uh, in April, so the, the one Q payment here, the four Q payment of last year was 65 bucks. So I'm hoping with continuously adding into the investment as well as the growth that we've seen, out of uh, the portfolio this year, out of Fundrise uh, uh, as a whole, we'll be able to do relatively well. We'll hopefully get to the 125 bucks a quarter mark, and we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep reinvesting. And, um, you know, this is something that I think about quite a bit. Uh, if you have, say, let's just say a rental property and you're just tired of doing some of the work, you know, you could sell out of that rental property, probably put it into Fundrise. I've seen good success. I know Dave has also used it in the past, Dave from Hidden Freedom, so make sure you check his channel out. He's about to retire, uh, so hopefully nobody from uh, his work is watching my watching my channel because I just uh, blew that out of the water. But if you watch Dave's channel, he talks about it all the time. 
But uh, Dave's about to retire, you know, mid forties, and he was very successful. He has a lot of real estate notes. And with that, he used to buy some Fundrise, but he also recently got out of Fundrise because of some of the, um, the K1s that they distribute as well as the 1099s. Now I know Fundrise is doing uh, a good job of consolidating in the future. It's why they came out with this, what they call the interval fund. Uh, and what I know they do is you can kind of see they have income, 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 and it's like multiple REITs all in one. I know what they're gonna do is to eliminate some of the costs associated with this. They're gonna continually over time shrink and combine and merge some of these. And I think actually, if you look at the sort of performance chart, I think you'll see that like it actually does say merge somewhere, doesn't it? Uh, I thought it did. Nope, I am mistaken. So um, I thought somewhere in here it has, but I know some of these have merged and I know that they've mentioned in the past that they will merge. Uh, but <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised also if in the coming days you see an expanded amount of money coming in uh, from some of those income e-reads. Cause I know they sent me a special email saying, hey, you know, we have a big quarterly payment to make sure since we are classified as a REIT real estate investment trust, we have to distribute 90% of what we make to you guys. And so um, I guess they had a, like an abnormal amount of uh, like income coming in last year. And so um, I'm anticipating a pretty good payment and I'll, I'll be sure to share that with you guys when I get it. In the coming days but it's been a while since i did a fundrise updates people ask me every once in a while i think they're curious about it i don't know if they also invest uh but i think it's a great alternative to the market man um i, I honestly wouldn't overlook it especially since it's very hands-off i'm getting good returns for the amount of money that i have invested um i can't complain whatsoever uh so i would just contemplate it uh four and a half percent yield is kind of what I'm getting, but I was doing more of the supplemental income. And if you just look at some of these percentage returns, uh, granted a lot of these are very small portions of the portfolio, 47%, 29%, 41%. So we did really well uh, in terms of appreciation last year. And I wish only that I had uh, a little bit money more into the growth side. But uh, at the time when I kind of set this up, I was more so focused on the income. And the older I get and the more money I kind of have, the less focused I get on say income, knowing that I'm gonna be working forever. I'm gonna be doing side hustles forever. So it doesn't necessarily make sense for me to investing only in dividend stocks and limiting myself. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm, I'm leaning more towards the growth stuff going forward. So anyway, a lot of information in there, a lot of rambling. So I appreciate you guys being patient with me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys are interested, I'll throw that invite link in the comment section as well as the description of the video and as always if you guys are curious want to ask me any questions instagram facebook twitter uh either at real matt money or matt underscore money one and uh just do a quick look see if you can find me i'll answer any questions you guys might have or ask them in the comment section down below and don't forget to subscribe thanks guys I'll talk to you guys in the next video cheers <laughs>